Hey, I'm Sean Hamlin with PremierGuitar.com. We're at Music Messa 2013 in Frankfurt, Germany. We're at the Gibson booth talking with Jim DeCola, and we've got Ryan Roxy on guitar. We're looking at the Frank Zappa Roxy SG. Jim, uh, news about this has been out for a little bit. A lot of people are psyched about it. We actually did a rig rundown video with Dweezil, uh, who had a prototype of this a while back. It's changed a little bit. Give us the rundown, because it, it's obviously way cool and different than your average SG. We've been working on this model. We work very closely with Dweezil and Gail uh, Zappa. We got Frank's original guitar and over the course of this past year uh, we spent a lot of time making prototypes and uh, Dweezil playing them uh, and, and just recreating Frank's uh, iconic Roxy SG from the 73 period. Uh, you know, it's, it's very closely associated with the Frank Zappa uh, Roxy Live and Elsewhere album and it's recreated from that period. Uh, so key features uh, you know, that it had, it, it started, it's an interesting guitar, it started life as a SG special from the mid 60s. And Frank uh, just loved to tinker and explore and, and uh, you know, try to search for new sounds. So it evolved to the point to where he added Gibson humbuckers, uh, a split coil switch, a phase switch. Uh, it originally had a wraparound and a short uh, Vi Maestro Vibrola tailpiece. He ended up putting a tunematic on it and then the long lyre vibrato with the Epi style flat bar handle. Uh, now one thing you're mentioning is for those who aren't super familiar with those SG juniors that had P90s and when he swapped out the humbuckers that was from the era when like there was virtually nothing to choose from. There weren't all the companies aftermarket manufacturers that there are now, and so it's kind of a mystery what he actually put in, right? Yeah, that, that's a good point. At that uh, at that time, there were no aftermarket uh, pickup manufacturers, so he just had you know what would have been off the shelf Gibson replacement parts, and so uh, the first prototypes we put our '57 classic humbuckings in there, and Dweezil road tested that for a while, and uh, he said that uh, he needed them a little bit more touch sensitive. Uh, a little bit more articulation to the sound. So, uh, did, did that translate to like he wanted a, them to be a little more high output? A or? little bit higher output, a little bit brighter sounding, a little more touch sensitive. So, a after I thought about that, I realized at the time Frank put those pickups in, Gibson had made the change to Alnico 5 magnets. So, I made up a set with Alnico 5 magnets and put them in a prototype and uh, Dweezil plugged him in and you could hear a very apparent difference and he was very pleased and, and took to the stage that night with that guitar. So, that's so that would be as opposed to the 57's have Alnico 2's? Or? Yes. Yeah, the 57's have Alnico 2's and that's a great sound too, but uh, Dweezil, you know, comparing the prototype to his dad's, you know, said that was one of the key uh, sounds and feels that he was hearing and feeling, you know, the difference between the two. So that's where we went with the Alnico 5s to you know, get it closer to his dad's original guitar. Um, other, other appointments, you know, his dad uh, sanded down the neck, so it has a very, uh, a very fast satin feel and a very slim profile. So we got all the dimensions for the neck profile and contour. It's a very thin, very rounded feel. He sanded down the face of the peg head, so it's a very raw, uh, you know, just sanded down kind of look. And uh, it had the period, you know, low wide fret wire. So it's a very uh, a low, fast, clean action. And he played nine gauge strings. So uh, you know, with the nine gauge strings and the low fret wire, it's you know particularly suited to that style of playing. Now tell us about the little mini toggles on the scratch plate. Okay, the mini toggles. That was another cool thing that Frank, uh, you know, experimented with, and that was kind of on the the forefront of things. You know, very revolutionary for that time period. People weren't really doing these sort of things, and uh, he had a, a single coil switch. So up, you know, single coils, both humbucking pickups, turns them into single coils, and uh, outside coils. Uh, they're actually the inside coils, and then uh, we also went ahead and made it. Uh, reverse wound, reverse polarity. His original one wasn't, but we ended up doing that. Just to, uh, It still sounds the same, but it just makes it low noise hum canceling when they're both on. So we just thought that would be a modern benefit to uh, keep things quiet and more higher performance. And of course, Frank would have done that you know, by today's standards if you know, they realized that was possible. Uh, we also have the phase switch. So when the pickups are both operative, uh, 
turning the switch up puts them out of phase and gives it that uh, thin, more nasal, mid-range focus kind of sound. And uh, another, another interesting feature is that when the neck pickup is on, the fi and when it's also single coiled, the phase switch will allow the uh, two coils to be toggle toggled between uh, positions. So when the phase switch is up and it's in single coil mode, it'll be the inner coil, and when it's down, it'll be the outer, outer coil. So that's another subtle kind of cool variation. Very so uh, we'll, uh, enough talk, we'll have Ryan do some demos so you can actually hear it. So first we're gonna hear... First we're gonna hear uh, the guitar with both pickups on and everything in phase. So there you hear your conventional SG, you know, humbucking operation. Now what we're going to do is single coil them. So now they're both on in single coil mode. There you go, classic cluck, uh, classic single coil cluck going on there. So now, if we put them out of phase, uh, first we're going to put them out of phase in humbucking. So now you can hear how that affects the sound. Give us, gives it a filtered type effect. Kind of, yeah, kind of like that, that wah parked in that notch, you know, to accentuate the mid-range. Now if we single coil it and, and have it out of phase, it takes that to another level. That's a lot of options just for the middle position on the three-way. It is. <laughs> now if you go to the neck position and, and uh, you keep it single coil, the face switch will also toggle between the inner and outer coils. That's the outside coil closest to the end of the neck? Uh, th this would be the inside coil. Down would be the outside coil. So it's going to be a little bit deeper, darker sound. Uh, you're dealing in subtleties at that point. They're so close together, but it gives you another tonal variation. And, and again, that's what Frank was all about. He spent a lot of time, the guitar evolved so much over the years and uh, you know Dweezil and I were looking at pictures you know from when he got it to how it evolved and and it was kind of funny and you know we both started laughing we're like wow you know your dad obviously had money he could have bought like more guitars but he's like yeah you know but that's how much he loved this guitar and it you know is a testament to you know how much he loved to tinker and how much he loved the guitar and that's why you know he felt and, and Gail felt compelled you know for us to do it and, and we felt the same way. Now is this the final state that, the, that his actual SG was in, or is this like one of the interim phases? No, this was, this was uh, he, he kept it at this phase for the longest time, and it was most noted at this phase, but uh, in the mid-70s, it got damaged by the airlines, and it crunched in the control cavities, so he had a full-face Miraplex pit guard installed just to cover up the crunched-in uh, control area. Uh, and at that point, you know, he, he added a preamp and did a few other things, and then he kind of quit playing it and went on to other guitars. You guys going to do a custom shop version with the crunched in cavity? Uh, that, <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. I don't know if we'll go that far, but we'll see. All right, so next up, we've got the Rudolph Schenker Signature V, right? Yes. This is uh, recreated after his iconic V that started life as a mid-70s flying V. He had his unique uh, signature graphic painted on it in the late 70s, and uh, he, he originally had it done. Uh, Michael also had a version of it too, but uh, Rudolph's you know, was the, the matching white on white and black on black signature graphic. Uh, we have the 57 classic humbuckings in here. He's been playing those pickups for a, a long time now. One, one little subtle detail that he likes is uh, the mounting rings mounted on top of the pit guard. A lot of times we'll, we'll make pickguard uh, Vs uh, and we won't use mounting rings, but he likes mounting rings because it kind of protects the pickup and he likes the extra tall mounting ring so that it's kind of more flush with the top of the pickup. Uh, another thing that uh, he preferred was the 70s neck joint. You know, it has a riser, so it's a little bit higher than some of our more streamlined models and it just gives it a different feel. So he's, uh, you know, kind of... Because of the action he prefers? 
Yeah, yeah, the action in the field with with the riser, you reduce the the neck pitch, so it's just a different feel the way the neck is pitched into the body. So he's uh, you know kind of settled on that and prefers that. So we recreated that. Uh, the neck also features the volute on the back of the headstock. Again, being period correct to that time period in the 70s, they had the volute for added strength. And again, it's a feel thing. You know, when you're you know in the open positions, your hand just kind of Feels snugs like up. There, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a real comfortable anchor for your hand position. Uh, we also went with you know the modern style tuner buttons, and uh, the pick guard is is uh, unique in that instead of his original one was actually. Uh, lacquered over plastic and over time you know it would chip and flake off of the pickguard plastic so this material is actually a dye sublimation so it's actually uh, dyed into the pickguard material so it's not going to peel or flake or anything like that so it's going to be very durable and it's not going to wear down. Cool. Uh, Should we hear a few uh, all the different pickup selections? Sure. Nice, so that's the bridge position. Yeah, we go to the next. In the middle. Oh, the middle. middle, yeah. Yeah, the middle. All right, All right. and how about next? next? Little solo in the next stop. Sweet. Ryan, Jim, we appreciate you taking the time to show us these new guitars. Where can people go online to find out more about them? Gibson.com. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a beat with our new Music Mesa videos.